This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. So one of the things that I've always aspired to do and something I'm really interested in is just the whole concept of like energy independence being completely off the grid. Uh, the idea here is the only thing I'm going to drink is diesel and water. And so as far as energy is concerned, solar is the way to go. And uh, I am stoked that I'll be completely off the grid here. Check this out. In fact, now I'm mounted inside this uh, new awesome box we built. You can see we've got four massive AGMs here and a uh, pretty ridiculous charge controller. And this is all gonna be tied into a system that's coming, um, roof racks on its way. We're gonna put this into the roof and basically get three of these massive panels. It's 130 watts each. So I'm gonna have tons of uh, battery bank, tons of ability to soak up some rays from the sun. And then hopefully there's nothing I really need to do as far as AC is concerned. I, there are a couple of things. Uh, like a microwave or whatever, but uh, I'm going to try to stay as DC as possible. But when it does come to uh, AC, it's actually ended up being a lot bigger and more ridiculous than I thought. But that, that right there is an inverter, kind of a ridiculous inverter actually. Uh, but uh, it'll give me, I think, like 2,000 watts of, uh, of AC power if I need it to run a 600 watt microwave. I know, math, yes, one of those. So this right here is a great example of basically what's going on the roof of the van, a just much smaller and more simple solution. Uh, this is something we set up about six months ago that sits out here in the sun and uh, runs Wi-Fi pineapple. And like I said, it's pretty much comprised of, got a solar panel here. This is a 36 cell monocrystalline five watt guy. Uh, and that is plugged into a very small charge controller, um, very inexpensive. And really all that's doing is uh, keeping this lead acid cell happy. This is a just lead acid battery for like a, uh, you know, kind of like a garage door opener or a security system. And uh, that all runs into a Pelican case where we have our Wi-Fi pineapple. And, you know, during the day it uh, soaks up enough uh, res to keep the battery charged enough so that it can make it through the, the night. And then the next morning, the sun comes up again, lather, rinse, repeat. And uh, yeah, this guy will go indefinitely as long as we have enough sun. Uh, which is pretty cool. It's pretty small and self-contained. Uh, the only big difference here is that we're not adding uh, an inverter for AC power, but otherwise it's the same exact concept that's going in the van, just much bigger. So I plug my meter in here. I can actually see what I'm getting off of this panel right now. We can see a fair amount of voltage. And actually if I, if I come here and like tilt the panel, away from the sun, you can see it drops dramatically, look. And then put it back in the sun, and there we go. Pretty cool, huh? But yeah, that's, that's the idea right there, just uh, the ability to stay unplugged for as long as possible. So there are basically three major components of a solar system. You have, of course, the solar panels, you've got a car charge controller, you've got batteries, Optionally, you could have an inverter if what you want is AC power of it. As far as the panels are concerned, there's three big types. There's amorphous, polycrystalline, and monocrystalline cells. A monocrystalline cell is actually what we're using in this project, and you can tell those because they're a single cell. They're currently the most efficient you can get, and you can tell you'll see a little square cell. They work really well in low light. Uh, otherwise, there's polycrystalline, which is you know still only slightly less efficient. Um, but also less expensive. Those are uh, pretty good as well. Uh, amorphous, I've never had any experience with these, but basically they're cheap, they're light. They've got a much lower absorption of the sun, but they're great for areas where you have just a ton of sunlight like out at sea. Uh, and basically the way it works is, well, these cells, they have a positive and a negative side. And between there, there's these electrons which are kind of loosely held together and when the sunlight hits those it causes them to get really excited and then they move around following of course the path of least resistance which is of course the silver grid that we see on these panels and this is what basically gives us our DC electricity and the voltage and amperage are really dependent on how many panels or how many cells we have and and uh, you know how many are connected in series so each cell produces about a half a volt and so with a 36 cells, that comes out to about 18 volts, which is really what you need to charge a 12 volt battery. Actually a lot less than that. See, the thing is there's, there's loss involved. Uh, panels are rated 
at the wattage and that just being the voltage times the amperage which is typically 12 volts is what we're working with and uh, when we do the math something like this 12 volt system or uh, comes out to about five watts which is about half an amp which is perfect for this little pineapple of course it's going to be much bigger for the van and there are many other factors that go into the actual output of the panel as far as like the angle towards the sun, you've got to worry about the temperature, uh, there's difference in elevation and the air mass as you, if, you know, if you're in a higher air elevation, there's, there's less density and you're going to get better sun, uh, you know, clouds and shade and how your different panels deal with that shade. And even your wiring, if you're using the wrong gauges of wiring or really long runs of wire, uh, in the real world, what you can basically expect is to get about 80% of the rated output of those panels. The other part of this whole equation is a charge controller, which is basically there to prevent the solar panels from overheating, uh, to prevent the batteries from overheating. I mean, the long and short of it is there's several different types of controllers, but they all have one primary purpose, and that is to extend the life of your battery, to keep them healthy. There's a bunch of different uh, protocols, if you will, as far as doing that, but uh, I guess it really comes down to your costs and uh, the size of the system. Like, for instance, the one in this little pineapple system is really small and cheap, but uh, you know, it gets the job done. Uh, as far as batteries, there are so many different kinds of batteries. Uh, the two that we're the most interested in are, uh, are deep cycle batteries like flooded lead acid and AGM or absorbed glass mat. The biggest difference between flooded and glass mat being that uh, flooded is uh, not sealed, so they actually gas and, and you have to make sure that they have a way to do that. Um, and AGMs, which I really like for inside of the van, they're completely sealed. It also makes it easier when you're purchasing and they can ship without any kind of special uh, needs or whatnot. But those are all types of deep cycle, which basically means that these batteries can go you know, down like 80% of their charge value and then come right back up with no problem and they can do that time and time and time again as opposed to what you probably have in your car which is a starting or a cranking battery and that's pretty much a battery that's made to give like a ton of power in a short period of time but they're really not made to like go you know down 80 percent and then back up they can really only do that maybe you know 10 30 something odd times before they need to be replaced which is why you don't want let your car battery die and, and that's solar in a nutshell, there's so much more to it, but you know, that's the basics that are uh, making everything powered here. With everyone working in the cloud using different devices, it can be a real challenge providing employees with IT support. And that's why I'm a huge fan of GoToAssist by Citrix. You see, it's one really easy to use, simple cloud-based platform that lets you assist anyone, anywhere, and get this on any device. The GoToAssist toolset includes the service desk, so you can go ahead and track those incidents, to remote support for PC, Mac, and mobile devices, and monitoring so you can be proactive, so you can take care of that thing that's going to blow up before it blows up, because trust me, it's gonna blow up. And I highly recommend you just go ahead and check out this powerful tool set, because it lets you easily adapt to your customers' needs, and then you can really just deliver support that's gonna be remembered by your clients as being quite remarkable. I know, when do we ever have remarkable support? You could be the guy that provides the remarkable support. So if you're in IT, I really recommend you check out GoToAssist. I've used it for years as a systems administrator and I wouldn't do IT without it. So sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com and then click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code HAK5. Again, that's GoToAssist.com, promo code HAK5. Well, that just about wraps up this episode of Hack5, but before we get going, I wanted to get into some of the feedback. As you guys know, we love to hear your feedback either at feedback at hack5.org or even on our Google Plus community, in the YouTube comments, on the blog, and I'd like to just go ahead and get into this round of comments from last week's episode where we were installing a secure, portable, persistent Linux installation on a USB drive using Lux Encryption, and Tim Ashley wrote, would Lux encryption shorten an SSD drive's life? Well, kind of. Conventional wisdom states that with trim disabled, which is the default, it wouldn't really make a substantial impact. The way that I see it, by the time you're close to the theoretical limit on the read-write cycle of a standard SSD, 
you're probably at the point where you're going to upgrade anyway. But that said, I've got to hand it to Carrotman135, who points out that F2FS would probably be a better choice than EXT4 as a file system. So F2FS stands for Flash Friendly File System. And it's pretty cool. It takes into account NAND flash memory characteristics, things, you know, things that you find on SSDs, on SD cards, and USB drives. And that would be a really cool alternative to kind of your standard EXT file systems that you use on Linux. Uh, now, MTZMTULIVU, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, on uh, YouTube uh, made a really insightful comment. He points out that Lux has its upsides up to eight different keys. Uh, and can op uh, keys can open a volume. Its downside, it's no secret that the volume is encrypted with Lux since the header is not encrypted. Lux, uh, TrueCrypt header is hidden but can only use keys. Now both Lux and TrueCrypt use a header and hence have one point of failure, a corrupted header, and encryption data goes kaput, right? Now plain volume has no header, hence it's resilient to volume corruption but its lack of a header causes other problems. So which is best to use? Well, it depends on the case. He says, if you are on Linux and want one tool to manage all three encrypted volume formats, then check this out, Zulu Crypt over at code.google.com. This is a pretty cool uh, open source project that it's going to allow you to go ahead and um, you know create uh, plain and Lux encrypted volumes and maintain all of those. And it uh, seems like a pretty cool thing. He goes on to say that he personally prefers plain volumes over the remaining two. The problem with plain volumes is that uh, you know, since it doesn't use a header, then you have to actually specify all of the properties when you mount the volume. Uh, but still, I thought that was pretty cool, so I'd throw that out there for you guys. Uh, another comment came in from uh, your N U R base, all your base. Anyway. Uh, URANUS base points out the most network logically secure distro, he says, is Cubes OS. I was just checking this out, pretty fantastic. He goes on to say, which lets you customize every single element of security. You can isolate applications from one another. You can visit their website and, uh, and do other things in many disposable VMs for maximum security. Poking around this seems like a really cool tool. I like their approach to, uh, you know, it, it's based on Zen, so it's kind of virtualization that we've talked about in the past, and doing basically using a hypervisor layer between all of your applications so you can have little buckets, kind of like Chrome is its own VM. Uh, pretty nifty. We'll have to check this out in more detail on the show, but I thought that that was really neat. Throw it out there for you. Jim S. comments, he got a new Asus laptop that doesn't support booting from USB, and I want to give mad props to Jigers. Jagers, Jingers, for uh, for a slick workaround using Easy BCD. You got to check this out. It's over at NeoSmart.net, and this guy right here allows you to take control of your bootloader. It's a modification for the Windows bootloader, which actually allows you to do things like boot from uh, USB disk, from network drives, from virtual disks, even ISO images, which I thought was just damn cool. Uh, so anyway, if you have comments, please go ahead and leave them uh, on YouTube, on our Google Plus community. I encourage you to go and seek that out. All of the ways to find out all of the social media stuff is over at hack5.org slash follow. And this episode in particular, I'm encouraging everybody to check out hackacrossamerica.com. You can sign up to get involved. This is all about the community. This is about coming together. And if you want to suggest a hackerspace I should check out, like a geeky mission, some crazy thing I should, some point of interest I should check out, uh, all of the ways that you can get involved are over at hackacrossamerica.com. That's also where you're going to find the dashboard of you know, all the zigzagging across the states and whatnot, and uh, the chat rooms and the cameras and all of that stuff. And of course, I also want you to go over there and check out, we're going to be doing a Google Plus uh, Hangouts on Air kind of Q&A stuff. So uh, that'll be this Friday. So when this airs the following Friday, we're all going to get together. And I would love to hear your ideas of crazy stuff we can put in the van, like telemetry. We're already, I'm working with Jason right now on putting together our own cell network, a mobile traveling cell network based on GSM. So uh, actually, he, he wants to know if you've got some like old, old feature GSM phones, like some old Nokias and stuff. Um, people sometimes send gifts to a fan or whatever at, uh, what is it, uh, 
uh, well, hack5.org slash follow, you can find all the details on sending us stuff. But if you have some of those old ones, we're putting together a, um, a base station for GSM in the van. And you have other crazy ideas of what would be really cool in this, uh, you know, the hackacrossamerica.com. That's where you'll find the forums and the chat and all of those other things. So I'm really, really excited to be launching this project. And I uh, hope everybody gets involved because that's, that's the thing that makes it all happen. All right. Oh, but there was one other thing. Oh, yeah, Shannon will be back next week. Um, until then, what do I normally say? Oh, yeah, we say check out hackshop.com if you want to support us directly. Hey, Sarah, what's going on in the hack shop this week? Good news. We got the travel bundles back, and I'm going to put a coin in every order. Awesome. And, of course, hack5.org for all the show notes and everything else. Uh, but, yes, very excited. Can't wait to hear your feedback on this. Can't wait to get on the road. And with all of that said, I'm Darren Kitchen. And for Shannon Morse, I'm reminding you, to trust your technolust. The light I did not know that that was about to, I did not know that I was about to say any of those things that I, was just, that I just said. There's a song off this album that just means everything to me, which is uh, Hold On off uh, Lost Reality. And it's all about holding on to this until it's no longer fun. And that's what I'm doing. In a nutshell. <laughs> Across America. Across America. <laughs> For the second time. Merka. Itsy bitsy teeny weeny sink. I'm sinking.